Hello, thank you everyone for joining today's session. Um, good evening. Um, we want to talk about the networking portfolio of VMware as well as you know specifically look at SD WAN and the Velo Cloud portfolio within within VMware, what it can do and you know how it can help and the prices um, you know get to um, you know, on the path to a digital enterprise. And so one of the reasons why we have uh, SD WAN and one of the reasons why we need this kind of innovation in in the networking side and the reason why VMware has an entire portfolio dedicated to networking is because of this. Uh, we know that the applications have changed. We have seen in the last 10 years or so, applications have moved from being monolithic client server architecture to you know, be, becoming tiered where you know, we have separate components for everything. We have a web component, we have the actual app, we have a separate DB, and then we have separated these functions to gain more control of you know, how these applications are delivered. And then you know, from that, we have seen that you know, we have seen uh, containers emerge lately you know, which is uh, which is the idea behind you know the microservices or the service-oriented architecture. And while the apps are going on this evolution path, uh, we know for a fact that the network hasn't done so much. While the network has evolved, it hasn't really evolved as much to support this um, support these applications. And that is one of the primary challenges that we face today. So the networks are increasingly complex, primarily because of the fact that uh, many networks are de designed by uh, by vendor specific visions of how the network should be. It is based on hardware. It is uh, it is also specific to certain vendors. Certain architectures are specific to certain vendors. The other thing is that because of this limited design options available, you know the uh, the amount of flexibility that we have is is not that high. So we need to we need to be able to commoditize this um, this hardware based architecture into a virtualized you know software based elastic um, architecture, and of course. You know, it also comes down to the fact that it is extremely hard to troubleshoot or maintain such networks or change anything in these networks because, you know, it will have a ripple effect. You know, any changes that we make in the network can have um, can have an adverse effect on how the overall systems work. So because of that, you know, the network and security teams lack the operational agility to make changes as and when it is required. And that's the reason why, when it comes to networking, VMware has a software-defined approach. It was kicked off with NSX. So NSX came when NSX came in. Um, the network was not virtualized before that. Now the network is virtualized. You know, we have commoditized the hardware, so we can use NSX to do switching, routing, and micro segmentation. Um, so that is that is one thing that you know that has revolutionized you know some parts of networking. Um, but the overall VMware vision is a lot beyond just that capabilities that NSX brings. It's just beyond the normal automation um, that that NSX brings. Um, when it comes to the VMware networking portfolio, the idea is to provide integrated layer two to layer seven services. So these are going to be components of the portfolio that will provide this in in different different layers and. This includes both networking and security because you know both of those go hand in hand today, as we know. The second part is that everything is software defined in when it comes to VMware networking portfolio. What it really means is that for every solution, every component that we have, we have a separate control plane and a completely different uh, data plane. And we give the customers a choice to implement the underlying infrastructure for that data plane. Uh, and for that control plane, so you know we are bringing this idea of uh, flexible and elastic software-defined systems to to networking. And finally, of course, you know the most important point is that uh, automation.
can't Sweden. hear you, Sriram. Sorry? Can't hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear now me we now? can hear you. Now we can. Okay. Automation is no longer. set up in uh, all the workloads then it means that you know we 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 have a huge gap between you know the multiple workloads sometimes even delivering the same same map Shriram can't hear you very clearly Hello. And as well, Sriram, are you we there? have. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we are losing you. Can you um, probably start the slide from the beginning? This particular slide. Sure. Yeah, because we are losing you. What we are going to look at today is is the SD WAN, uh, which is also a software defined component that is added to the networking portfolio. So to give you. of service providers across the uh, all the major service providers across the region um, it has a global footprint we have uh, when it comes to support we do have you know next day same day uh, delivery capabilities now um, and we are present more than um, it says 70 here but you know we have now um, we have now footprints in more than more than 100 countries and more importantly, you know, apart from the uh, high profile customers that we have, uh, one thing that I want to highlight is the ecosystem. When it comes to SD-WAN, um, it's the WAN, which means that it has to interface with a number of, uh, number of other uh, solutions from a lot of different vendors. And I think that VeloCloud makes a huge difference because of these strategic alliances that it has with uh, companies like Fortinet, Checkpoint, Forcepoint, um, Zscaler, and the 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 benefit of this is that you know when 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 we want to integrate these cloud delivered solutions, it will be extremely easy with Velo Cloud because you know all we have to do is to point um, to point to the IP address that these companies give us, and then it will automatically pull those um pull those policies which which makes an enormous amount of difference which means that there is no duplication of efforts and that's what um that's what simplification of van is all about as well in terms of market share this is 2017 and since of course uh Velocloud has grown um so in 2017 we had about 30 percent market share now it's closer to 40 percent when it comes to the sd van market um and Cisco has actually dropped since, um, dropped since as well. And then I will show you the current landscape as it as it looks, you know, based on the Gartner's, um, based on the Gartner's uh, magic quadrant. Now, one of the things that um, 
one of the things that we see when it comes to the uh, magic quadrant is that it, the, for the first time, the Vantage uh, was, you know, um, uh, was evaluated by Gartner in 2018. And as you can see, VMware is there, is in the leader quadrant along with um, Silver Peak and Cisco. You can see that in 2019, VMware and Silver Peak is still there, but VMware is starting to pull away from the uh, from the competition. And the reason for this is that in in the last few years, uh, Velo Cloud has consistently brought out major features every every three months. And because of this, because of the fact that this is a subscription based service, which means that all the features that come out is available for all customers, you know, when it becomes generally available. And these new features get added um, every every three months or so. Uh, and that has enabled a lot of Velo Cloud customers to enjoy these new features and you know plan for these new features to be used to make sure that their van is optimized at all times now you can see some of the other sd van players uh, for example you know you can see fortinet um, and you know juniper networks now these companies do have a solution it's but unfortunately it's based on firewalls and firewalls by design they have certain um, inherent um, um, limitations because of how that technology is supposed to work. That's one. And the other reason why you see uh, none of them in the leader squadron is also because of the fact that for a true SD WAN solution, the cloud has to be the network, which means that when it comes to Velo Cloud, there are gateways that Velo Cloud maintains. You know, across the uh, points of presence, pops of all internet service providers, and we can utilize that in building the overlay, and that's the that's the key here, and that's one of the reasons why um, Velo Cloud is um, you know ranked higher than all the other competitors in in the in the Magic Quadrant. From an architecture perspective, it is an extremely simple solution. We have Van Edge devices. So Vantage is wherever we have a workload, we just we just place a Vantage. For example, you know if it's a uh, if it is a bank, we'll have uh, we'll have uh, an edge device in the edge queue. We have edge device in all the branches, and if there is cloud, we will place a virtual edge device in the cloud as well. And we have an orchestrator, as you can see at the top, which basically controls everything. These edge devices have no access. You know the orchestrator is the only way to configure and maintain the entire van. It's a single pane of glass management, provides us with a lot of analytics. And of course, you know, there are gateways that we maintain in the cloud uh, next to SaaS providers and uh, next to ISPs, which means that uh, across, across all the locations, you know, we build an overlay and we utilize uh, all the available links in each location um, that that customers have. Uh, now, if you look at it, you can see certain similarities between how VMware has gone about uh, the HCI uh, as well as here. For example, here we are commoditizing the connectivity. We are commoditizing the physical layer. Uh, so when we when we deploy a Velo Cloud solution, from that point onwards, you know the the type of link doesn't matter. We can use private links. Lease lines, we can use MPLS or broadbands. We can also even use 3G or 4G connectivity. And the whole solution will just see that as bandwidth, available bandwidth. And we just aggregate that together. And this is the reason why Velo Cloud is consistently ranked better than all the competition because of the ability to do this. We no longer talk about failover. Because you know we are talking about aggregating all the bandwidth. So if one of that link doesn't work, all we are going to see is a slight reduction in the bandwidth. Other than that, there is no impact to the to the entire network. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail into this slide because there's, as you can see, there are a lot of words, a lot of features. But I just wanted to point out that. When it comes to the best SD WAN solution, you know we need to make sure that the solution has every feature available in the market, and that's the reason why I have I have 
uh, I have kept this here. And and here is the thing: this is what we expect out of a normal SD-WAN solution or any WAN solution, for example. Um, things like PCI compliance are expected to be part of um, edge devices now. When we send out traffic to the internet through any means, uh, to any public network, for example, uh, it needs to be encrypted, it needs to be segmented, and we need to have the, we need to have the ability to uh, comply to you know all these standards that that exist in the market. Uh, and PCI is one of one such uh, stringent uh, regulation that that we that we have, and you know we need the edge device to be able to uh, support that if required, as and when required. And you know that's the uh, that's the point of this particular slide that any any feature that we need is available on on the solution from day one. There is no need to wait for a feature release. What is coming in the future release is always going to be exciting new features that is required to add more and more flexibility and performance to, to the solution. In terms of you know, the secret sauce or the dif true differentiator for Vola Cloud, which nobody else is doing right now, is the dynamic multi-path optimization, or we call it DMPO. Now, DMPO, is extremely important because again like i mentioned before we no longer talk about failovers we no longer talk about uh, a quality of service because you know those those terms are coming from the networking world which are at least 10 or 15 years old and in order for the modern digital enterprise those terms is they're not sufficient to to satisfy the requirements. And that's why we have something like the MPO. And now what the MPO does is three small things, but it does it very well. Uh, one is it monitors all the links consistently, looks for any issues. For example, you can see in the before um, slide here, you know, there is there's latency, there's jitter, and there is packet loss. We continue to measure this, make sure that we are able to identify this beforehand, and you know we keep track of you know which link is working well and which link is not working well. The second thing is dynamic per packet steering. This is the biggest difference between a firewall-based solution and VeloCloud because in VeloCloud we do not look at it as a flow. We look at per packet, which means that we have the ability to steer the packet through any link at any given point of time. And because of this ability to steer these packets differently we end up not losing packets as opposed to the other vendors. And the third one is on-demand remediation. Now, this is very simple. Now, once we know that there is a possibility of losing packets, the system can automatically, with zero maintenance intervention, take some steps to make sure the packets are not lost. One of those may include, for example, you know, it can, um, it can look at two links and think that we need to send duplicate packets multiple packets through multiple links so that even if one of them get lost, the other one still reaches the destination. And at the destination, the first packet is received and is accepted. The second and subsequent packets are dropped, thereby making sure there is no duplicate packets. Now, this is impossible to do by the native UDP or native voice and video protocols that we use. Whereas with VeloCloud, because we are able to sequence this at the source and the destination, we are able to achieve this and make sure the packets are not getting lost. Now, this is exactly the last slide, but a practical view of, um, of the MPO. As you can see on the left, you know that's just 2% packet loss. And this is actually captured from one of the live demos that happened, and you know we can easily replicate this, you know, with a with a packet generator, and then you know running the traffic through through Velo Club. I will quickly stop to see if there are any. Thank you, Iman. Yeah, like I mentioned, you know, if you if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and. If there isn't anything else, thank you so much for joining today's session. And, and let me know if you have any questions. Chanakya, do you have anything to add? 
Uh, no, I think that would be all. Then uh, that's pretty much it. Then. Okay. Done, Shreenam. I think that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, I think if you could just drop your email ID in the Q&A tab in case. Yeah, you already did. Perfect, perfect. All right. Yeah, I think that that's all. Yeah. Okay.